Uh, wherever Nick Arce goes, he does bring his own audience. The first time, actually it was his pro debut for Nick Arce, and he had the first fight of the night. We were here on, on a Thursday, maybe, and we were doing a rehearsal for TV, and all you heard was a roar, like, whoa, wait a minute, there's like, what's going on here? It was for Nick Arce. Beto, I remember last summer when you had the fight at the L.A. Sports Arena. Yep. And Nick Arce fought, and he had two or three whole sections. I believe that attendance was better than most USC basketball games of the 90s. Not the Harold Miner days, not, not, right. not that days. So George Raveling actually had it going on, but uh, Nick Arce, again, 8-0, trying to continue his development. But again, the storyline is the young man does sell tickets. Nick Arce undefeated, but there you see Jesus Aguinaga, 4-4-1. 21 year old from Phoenix, Arizona, now living and training in Mexicali, Baja California. Making his way into the ring, the always exciting. Here comes that noise from the Westside Boxing Club. They call themselves the Marching Skulls at the Westside Boxing. Nick Garcia's nickname, La Calavera, the Skull. There you see him trained by the Salcedo brothers, Nacho and Jose. Westside Boxing located at Mid-Cities, Los Angeles. Salcedo brothers actually from Gardena, California. He's 20 years old, went to University High School, product of the LA USD, attends West LA Junior College right now. And he does love his uh, hard rock. Set to go with our next bout tonight. Six rounds of boxing this in the super featherweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing red, trimmed in black and gold, he weighed in officially 127 and one half pounds. His professional record in nine bouts stands at four victories, four defeats, and one draw. Fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, here is Jesus Chuy Aguinaldo. And next, his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trunks, he weighed in officially 127 and one half pounds. In eight professional bouts, he stands in the ring tonight, perfect as a professional. Eight victories, no defeats, six wins by way of knockout. Fighting out of Los Angeles, California, here is the undefeated, Ned La Calavera. in charge of the action, Rudy Barragon. Seconds, please, seconds. You've already received your instructions, okay? I want you to protect yourselves at all times. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves. Come on, fighting at the bell. Good luck. Six rounds in the super featherweight division Ready, coming your way. Rudy Barragon Ready. is Ready. the referee. Ready. Thank you for joining us on Ring TV Live. Bethel Duran, Steve Kim from what's about to be a very loud special event center at the Fancy Springs Resort and Casino in Indio, California. Nick Arce, undefeated 8-0 with six KOs. Jesus Aguinaga, 21-year-old, is 4-4-1 and one in his career. All right, box. Arce in the black trunks. He's 20 years old, has a, he's a taller fighter. Aguinaga in the red and gold. About a month ago, Aguinaga decided to get out of Phoenix and move to Mexicali, where his family has roots. This has made a big difference for him. Arce that guard down, and he gets tagged, and he leaves himself open. That's been one of your critiques of him. No, and one thing I don't like what he does, he doesn't really stick out his jab, but he doesn't control distance, and that is a byproduct of not really having a hard stick on the front side. I have to tell you right now, just looking at them physically, Aguinaga looks much stronger than Arce. Aguinaga 
is down at this 130 pound. He said he's fought as heavy as 145 in his career because he was just taking fights just for the sake of taking them. Now he feels that he has more experience than Arce. He's been in tougher battles, been in tough scraps. He had a fight with Izuarte, with, and he felt like he won. Aguinaga uh, also lost to Spinks, that many people thought that he won. So he's been, as he said, he's been on the wrong side of some decisions. Understands that it's a business at the young age of 21. He said tonight against a fighter like Nick Arce, well, he feels like he can come in and control. That's what he's going to try to do. And he oh. tags Arce with the left. And you know, another mistake Arce is making is he gets hit with the big right hand. He's backing up straight. And he's le letting Aguinaldo really have the play here and just marching forward. And he's having a very big round number one. Nick Arce matched up very tough tonight. He's in the black trunks against Chewy Aguinaga. Arce crowd getting loud. Aguinaga putting his hands up. Aguinaga, Mexican, born in Phoenix. Arce from El Salvador and Honduras roots. He said he represents all of Latin America because he's Salvadorian, Honduran, Guatemalan stepfather, and he has Mexican trainers. The Salcedo brother, you see him in the box. He run the West Side Boxing. Arce said he watches every Ring TV Live rebroadcast and he agrees with you, Steve, that he needs to have that jab. He agrees with your technique, with your critiques. Well, in all, in all fairness to him, though, it's much easier doing it from where we sit, from where he does it. But I do think he's having a very rough round number one. And even the right hand he's throwing, not fully committing. He's basically punching off his back foot from the back seat. All the hard punches have been landed by Aguinaga here in the first two and a half minutes. Arce started his career with six straight KOs. Said he fell in love with it. Last two fights have gone the distance. Closing seconds of the opening round. It's been a good one for Chewy Aguinaga against Nick Arce and Indio. Now we take a look at some of the action from round number one, and this really started off a good round number one for Aguinaga, landing a lead left hook and then an overhand right. Those are probably the two telling punches of the first stanza, and it was a stanza that I believe Beto was run by the underdog, Aguinaga. Second round of action. Keep the tweets coming. Linus, I know you're really excited to watch Chewy Aguinaga. And in Huntington Beach, it's Tim Palooza celebrating a birthday, a birthday and Ring TV Live with Bethel and Steve. What more do you need, Tim, from Huntington Beach? And all I could say is happy birthday. Also, Dr. John Law and family watching in Redondo Beach. Beto, if I heard correctly, in Arce's corner, which was relatively calm, they wanted their fighter to keep it in the center of the ring and control things with the jab. Quite frankly, in the first 25 seconds or so, that really has not happened. As you see Arce pacing the perimeter of the ring, I, I just wonder, is he going to be able at any point control that center of the ring? Again, physical strength, that seems to be an advantage for Aguinaga. Arce gets tagged with a quick left from Aguinaga. He's in the red trucks. Arce in the black trucks. Arce turned pro in 2014 in November. Here at the Fan Springs Resort and Casino. His third fight here in Indio. Last time he was in the ring, a unanimous decision over Francisco Dominguez. I was in June at the LA Fight Club at the Belasco Theater in downtown. We're gonna be back there August 5th. Get your ticket that sells out every single first Friday of the month. Aguinaga asking him for some. Arce in the black trunks. Shaping up to be a good scrap between a 20-year-old Arce and a 21-year-old Aguinaga. 
One thing I notice about RC when he throws his punches, Beto, he doesn't really have his feet set, and he doesn't seem to really create a lot of momentum. I, I just think they need to get, when they get back into the gym, the one thing I'd work on is really just having him sit on a heavy bag and really practice a hard jab and a right hand and just really stick with that. Hard one, too, and he get hit again with the left hook. Body shot from Aguinaga, followed up with the left hook. Arce with the left of his own, but he's swinging from no, his heels. No, Beto, the problem is it's really bad technique, and basically, for the most part, his punches can be described as arm punches. They don't have a lot of heat on them. Step up in competition for Arce against Aguinaga. Oh. Don't let the record deceive you. There were two good right hands right there about 10 seconds ago from Aguinaga. Rudy Barragón stepping in there. And we are in the corner of Aguinaga. So if you're hearing instructions, that's the corner <laughs> for Chewy Aguinaga, the fighter from Phoenix. He's looking good here early in the fight. It's scheduled for six. Final seconds of the second round. Scheduled for six in the super featherweight division. Undefeated Nick Arce. Chu Yaganaga. Puerta Negra time is jamming. Tigres del Norte get going. Chu Yaganaga is fired up as he came back to that corner. He's gonna get tired. He's gonna get tired. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Let's take a look at some of the action from the previous round and another good one for Aguinaga. The right here, you see Arce with the right hand to the body, but again, not sound defensively, but again, Arce with a nice combination on the inside. But Beto, I'll be honest with you, I thought the harder punches throughout the most part of round number two were landed by Aguinaga. I have a 2 nothing for the underdog. Third round of action. Aguinaga, if you join us right now, in the red and gold. Arce in the black. Beto, listening in, in the corner of Arce, they're asking for a very hard jab, but I just wonder, are they asking their fighter to do something that he simply doesn't do very well? And they're also saying that Aganaga will get tired. I'm not sure about that, given the fact Aganaga's being allowed to walk forward. It's much easier to conserve your energy or your battery pack when you're allowed to march forward as opposed to walking back the way Arce is. Jesus Aguinaga, Chewy is the nickname. That's if you're Mexican, your name is Jesus, you become a Chewy. Trained by his dad, Socorro Aguinaga. Dad was a former pro boxer, took his son and his brothers to the gym as kids. Aguinaga started boxing at the age of eight in Phoenix. All of Aguinaga's losses have come against undefeated fighters. And there is some blood from the face of Aguinaga. It's from the nose of Aguinaldo, I believe, from the angle I have. Yes, it is. It is actually from the right nostril, it looks like, Beto. Yep. From the right nostril of Aguinaga. As RC connects. Aguinaga also in his career has never fought an opponent with a losing record. He said early on in his career, he was just taking fights just to take them. Beto, I believe there was a good left hook on the inside, landed by Aguinaga. I think Arce's having his best round, but again, the harder punches are being landed by the man in red. Aguinaga lands one, Arce lands one. Aguinaga's asking for it. A minute to go in the third round. It's was shaping up to be a good scrap between two young fighters here in Indio. Crowd is fired up. More blood coming down the nose of Aguinaga. He's fixing that mouthpiece, trying to breathe. Arce in the black. Moving around. Arce has always been in good physical condition. They run the Culver City Stairs in Southern California. They climb them, do about five times. 
The workout at Dorsey High. They run the track there. Aguinaga moved down to Mexicali. He said where the heat has helped him lose weight. He said he got away from the friends and family in Phoenix and is all fo solely focused on boxing. He's looking good here. 10 seconds to go in the third round. A good round for Nick Arce from Westside Boxing. Body shot from Aguinaga. And that'll do it for three. He don't want it. If he hugs you, nigga, keep grabbing him and push him down. Cut his breath. Hold him down. We want to fucking hug. Break him down. Come on. Joey, listen to me. Hey, when you got him on the floor, when you got him on the ropes, I want you to work the body, okay? Don't be a head hunter. Work the body and then go back up. Okay? Big breath. And we take a look at some of the action, and that might have been the punch that opened up the Crimson Tide on the face of Jesus Aguinaga, and I think that was a pivotal round. I thought Arce had lost the first two. I have it 29-28 Aguinaga halfway through. Who else has it that way? Andy and his family, the Woosters from Gardena. Have it the same way as Steve Kim. Also, thanks to the Law family in Pittsburgh watching tonight. So we're getting your tweets as a right hand landed by Aguinaga. He's in the red. Fourth round, scheduled for six. Our first two fights tonight were early KOs. This one, just a good fashion scrap. Jab from Arce. Arce throwing that one punch. Haven't seen many combinations from the 20 year old. Aguinaga feeling very comfortable in that ring. At the end of every round, his corner is actually in front of the Arce clan. And he looks over and he mocks the fans here for Nick Arce. Another jab from Arce. Body work Aguinaga. Step up in competition for Arce and it's showing. No, it really is best. Oh, and a big right from Aguinaga. He's loading up. He didn't follow it up with a combo. He's loading up. Arce hurt. Aguinaga stalking him around the ring. Another left from Aguinaga. Two left from Aguinaga. Overhand right. Arce needs to put his hands up and protect himself. First time he's ever been in danger in his young career. Aguinaga, look at that. Look at that swag he has in that ring, Steve. Wow. Loading up a big right. Arce eats that. Oh, wow, a big right push down from Aguinaga. Beto, Aguinaga should just keep swinging. He might hit something because every right? time he lands, he hurts Arce. He's looking for that one big knockout punch. Maybe a combination will help him. Oh, this is a very confident Aguinaga corner and with good reason. Agin Look at Arce's eyes, they are wide mm. open. Aguinaga, Chewy as they're calling him. Nice and calm in the red trunks. Another good round for 21 year old Chewy Aguinaga. He told me that he was gonna win this fight that Joel Diaz, who he's known since the amateurs, believed in him. He said, why not come here to Coachella? This is another place where he's fought and won the Desert Showdown. He said this is a place that he wants to put on a show because he has friends and family here watching him also. Aguinaga's looking for that home run. He's looking to end it. Ten seconds to go in the round. Oh, a good right at the bell. A huge fourth round for Jesus Aguinaga. And you look at the... You look at the contingent of RC fans, and there is concern across their face, Beto. With good reason.
And we take a look at some of the action from the previous round, and it was a series of right hands from Aginaga that really regained momentum after what was a decent third for Arce. And I would say throughout most of this round, Beto, it was Arce on his bicycle or his horse as he got shaken, shook and rattled a few times. And you know what? I'm not an expert, but reading the facial expression of Arce, there's a lot of concern in round number four. In his face and in his corner. Chewy Aguinaga in the red, four, four, and one. Said, first thing he told me was, don't look at my record, I'm better than that. Usually when fighters say that to me, I don't believe them. I'm believing <laughs> Chewy Aguinaga right now. Aguinaga, mentioned earlier in the last round, he knows the Diaz brothers, Joel and Antonio, Joel's gym, and he has gone there to spar with Diego De Loya and Diego Magdaleno. He's gotten quality work. Two of his pro fights, he had Jose Benavides Sr. as his trainer. Said that helped him out. He grew up with Jose and David Benavides going to all the tournaments. And he is just, see, this kid does not look 4-4 in one. He looks good right now. And you know what? He's not so much throwing the right hand. He's actually just hurling it at him from his shoulder. And Arce has a lot of flaws that are being exposed tonight. And one thing I'd work on with Arce, win, lose, or draw, uh, as he gets back into the gym after this fight is really his footwork and balance. It's really affecting the way he throws his punches and quite frankly there's not a lot on him and it's allowed Aguinaga to basically walk through him throughout much of this night. I assume you have it 3-1. I don't think there's any doubt about it and I think even in this round as we take a look at the first minute and a half it's been controlled by Aguinaga. I think Arce needs to do something dramatic here to turn the tide of this fight. I think the physical control from the very beginning has been with Aguinaga. Aguinaga in the red. Body shot from Aguinaga. See this is what Aguinaga is doing. He's putting the combinations where Arce is flailing with one punch at a time. And you see what's happening now, though. Aguinaga is now just throwing a jab, doubling up on it, and he's allowed to being, he's allowed to come right through the front door, and there's not a lot of resistance being put up by Arce from an offensive standpoint. Blood coming down the nose from Aguinaga. He was cracked in the third. Corner taking care of it. Al Gomez, Mar Marvin Ramiro, and Socorro Aguinaga doing the work in the corner. So for the fighter from Phoenix. So you see these punches here. He's reaching and he's lunging and he's getting no real leverage on these shots as Arce. Arce, 8-0 with six KOs. You're maybe wondering if he's thinking he needs that KO and he's going to try to dig back into that. But Aguinaga is a different fighter. I would say the other issue is, though, Beto, having seen many of his pro fights, I think this is the first time we've seen Arce really hurt inside that ring. I, I think certainly this has been the roughest fight he's ever had. First time I've ever seen him not in control of a fight either. Ten seconds to go. Final seconds of the fifth round. Another good round for Aguinaga. This is your career, they're telling well, Chewy Aguinaga. Beto, I, I love what was being said in that corner. That's a jockey that is not coasting. He is going to the whip, because I think they realize they are not supposed to win this fight. It is Arce that is the house fighter. Going into the last three minutes, Beto, if he stays on his feet, Aguinaga wins. Chewy Aguinaga has never hit the canvas, has never been stopped. All his four losses have been a decision. Nick Arce, perfect 8-0, six KOs. A big right for Aguinaga. A very confident corner from Aguinaga. Oh, 
Oh, a good crack from Maginaga. He has a heavy hand, but Arce is showing a good beard. No, he is, but here's what's happening here. Aginaga's right hand is now a lot straighter than it was, and Arce throwing wide arm punches, and Aginaga is able to come right through the pocket down the middle. Aginaga's corner trying to go to the body. Cuerpo is body. Good action from the opening bell between these two young fighters. Aginaga has that smirk. He's had that all fight. He's executing his game plan just like he told me. What's that famous line? Everybody has a plan until they're what? They get hit. And from the very beginning, it was Arce who was hit, and the tenor of the fight changed dramatically. And I think a lot of the Arce's weaknesses, and again, there's another right hand right up the middle. And you see Arce again, really bad technique in terms of coming forward with behind the jab with proper footwork. A lot of things are going to have to work on as they get back to the gym for Arce. Aguinaga is just throwing the heavy punches. Gets caught with one, asking for more. Body shot from Arce. Aguinaga just pushing him around because of the experience that he's had. The ability to go up. He said he had no problem making this way. He just winked at Arce right now. <laughs> oh, that is confidence. And he gets hit with the left. Overhand right. Gets hit with the left. Now they're telling him, don't make a mistake. 30 seconds to go in the fight. Aguinaga. And Beto, we're right near his corner, the Aguinaga corner. They want to finish strong here. I, I think they've won this fight, but you never know. And there's like a good that, left hook. Another one? Nick Arce has a lot of heart. He has been hit hard tonight. The toughest scrap in his career did not look sharp but he's absorbed some punishment, and they're gonna go at it for the final seconds. What a fight. A good one between Aguinaga and Arce. Beto, a lot of lessons were learned here by Arce. He got taken to school, the school of hard knocks, by that rugged veteran right there, Aguinaga. You can't judge a book by its cover, and oftentimes you can't judge a fighter by its record. Uh, I think he easily won this fight. 59-55. You got that 59-55. Oh, my goodness. Steve, look at my Twitter. Veronica Montebello agrees with you. Cynthia in, oh, in Brentwood by UCLA agrees with you. Go Bruins. There you go. And just taking a look at my official scorecards, Beto, I think the third round was about the only one you can give Nick yeah. Arce. And I thought some of these rounds were very, very wide. And Aguinaga had the bloody nose. But for the most part, it was the bloodshed <laughs> being doled out by Aguinaga. And I thought he won this fight 59-55. As for Nick Arce, uh, I think some valuable lessons were learned here. And I think regardless of the result of this fight, just looking at him technically, I don't see a lot of improvement. And I think they have to go back to the gym and really break him down to the most basic fundamental levels. They almost start over. The first time you and I worked together, I think uh, that was... It was October of no, last year. No, the first year. time we worked the uh, Arce fight yeah. together was at StubHub. Yes, October. And uh, October 3rd, correct, 2015, Arce was getting smacked around. Yeah. He came back and got the knockout, and you said that he needed to work a jab, he needed to make improvements. We haven't seen that from him. I think the first thing I'd work on, a lot of shadow boxing, and just get him to step with his punches better. His footwork is everything. Uh, once your footwork breaks down fr from the top up, it's very hard to do anything correctly inside the ring. And for much of this night, I saw a lot of flailing away, a lot of lunging, and an overabundance of arm punches. Interesting to see how the judges have it. They always say, when you're sitting ringside, you see one thing. On TV, you see another. Judges are being tallied. And Joe Martinez. Rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three see it the same. 59-55, your winner by unanimous decision, Jesus Chue Aguinaga! Chue Aguinaga!
Aguinaga comes from Mexicali and gets the upset. His entire career, he's taking on undefeated fighters. Tonight, he hands somebody their first loss. Nick Arce falls to eight and one. Aguinaga, there you see him, five, four, and one. He definitely better than his record is indicating. There's no doubt about it, and I thought from the very beginning of this fight, Beto, he came out and he took physical control of this fight, controlled the center of the ring, some early overhand rights, which really, I thought, shook up Arce, had Arce on his heels and on his roller skates for much of the night, and quite frankly, he got taken to school. We'll be back with more from India. You're watching Ring TV Live.